My name is Darren Brake, lead pastor of the House of Lord, and we are excited to share with you that we are partnering with Summit County Community Partnership because of a grant made possible by the Ohio Mental Health and Addiction Services Department, and we are partnering to bring you Hidden in Plain Sight Opiate Use Disorder. This is a education and awareness webinar series. Now I have two events that I need you to mark your calendars for. The first event is on Friday, July 9th from noon to 1 p.m. I will be facilitating a conversation via Zoom on local addiction recovery resources. I'll be talking with Perry Clark, who is the president and founder of Truly Reaching You, along with Dr. Joan Williams. She is the district outreach coordinator for the United States House of Representatives serving the 11th Congressional District of Ohio. That means she serves Akron, Ohio. Uh, the link to register will be below in the caption. Now the second event will happen the next day and that is Saturday, July 10th from 11 to 2 p.m. We will have a recovery resource drive through and food giveaway at the House of the Lord that is located at 1650 Diagonal Road in Akron, Ohio. Now if you are connected in any way to people in need of recovery resources and their families, you need to participate in both of these events. See, these events have the potential to not only change a life, they can also save a life. Now join us on July 9th for the webinar and July 10th for the resource drive through and food giveaway. Looking forward to blessing the people of Akron, Ohio. Take care. It is noon. Um, I'm going to go ahead and, and get us started. I uh, just want to start right on time, be respectful of, of everybody's time. Uh, my name is Pastor Darren Brake. I'm lead pastor here at the House of Lord. And uh, Hidden in Plain Sight is a partnership uh, between the House of Lord uh, and Summit County Community Partnership with the grant that was provided by the Ohio Department of Mental Health and Addiction Services. Um, this, what you're tuning into today is uh, num webinar number three in a series of four. We've been dealing with uh, hidden in plain sight opiate use uh, disorder. This is a, a education and awareness webinar series where we have been kind of taking different angles um, and looking at this epidemic within our community. We started off with a panel discussion, looking at it from more of a high level perspective and how COVID uh, setting the context for how we're having to deal with this reality right now. Uh, then last month we did uh, part two in the webinar series where we began to deal with stigma that, uh, that uh, can affect and impact recovery. Uh, so if you wanna catch up on any of those that you may have missed, they are on the uh, House of the Lord YouTube page. It's the official uh, THOTL YouTube channel. Uh, you can get those videos there and then you can also uh, subscribe and hit the bell uh, you'll be notified as these other videos, this one, and then we have one more uh, coming up next month that's available. Uh, we are all uh, in for a treat today. We have Dr. Joan Williams, um, who is, uh, she's a member of the House of Lord, so definitely uh, happy to have her involved uh, in this. There are so many uh, talented, I know I'm biased, but there's so many uh, talented people uh, that are part of the house that I am always excited when we're able to look within uh, and find people to help out with these types of events. But uh, also we have Perry Clark, who is a friend of mine and a partner and, and a mentor as we work together uh, in the space of returning citizens and re-entry and things of those nature. Uh, so without further ado, I'm gonna ask Dr. Joan Williams to tell everyone a little bit about herself. Thank you so much, Pastor Darren, and thank you for having me. As you said, I'm Dr. Joan Williams. Um, I hail originally from New York, and I've been very, very happy to be a member of the Akron community for the last three and a half years, almost four years, and an, an attendee and minister at the House of the Lord. Um, in my day life, <laughs> I also am the Summit County Outreach Coordinator, working at the office of the 11th Congressional District of Ohio, 
Um, that office was form formerly represented by former Congresswoman, now Secretary of HUD, Marsha Fudge. Um, and we just provide services to the community more than many people are aware of, but it's a pleasure to be here today and be able to speak to some of the things that we're able to do for the residents of Akron. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Joan. And uh, Perry Clark, for the, the couple of people that may not know who you are, uh, on the on the attending the webinar today, let us let them know uh, who you are. Yes, um, thank you, there, Pastor Darren. I'm Perry Clark. I'm the uh, president and founder of Truly Reaching You. Um, uh, Truly Reaching You is a ministry and a uh, nonprofit organization that uh, provide uh, resources to men who are returning back to the community from incarceration, as well as substance abuse residential treatment center. And we've been uh, doing this for um, 20 plus years now, um, seeking to help give a hand up and not a hand out to those returning back to the community, seeking healthiness. Oh, wow. That's, I mean, that's why I said the, everyone who's tuning in today, uh, they are in for a treat. Uh, now that you all know who, uh, who is participating in the webinar, I'm going to launch a poll uh, so we get a feel for who is in the audience. Uh, this poll is anonymous. It's only three questions. So uh, please take a moment to answer these three questions just so uh, we have an understanding of, of who our audience is and uh, who's, who's coming and who's benefiting from this is just three uh, short questions. They're all multiple choice, nothing you have to type. Uh, and again, it's all anonymous, but it'll still give us some, some uh, demographic information so we understand uh, who's in the audience um, and who we are spending some time with today. Um, Perry Clark, while, while, this, while there's, everyone is filling out the, uh, the poll, uh, I'm going to ask you if you would kind of talk, uh, give some words and even kind of talk in a little more detail um, about your work with, uh, with truly reaching you. Um, I'm sure as you are engaging uh, returning citizens and, and working with them, um, you see on a day-to-day -day basis the, the need for uh, addiction and recovery resources in our area. Um, so please uh, talk to us about kind of how you see that on a day-to-day -day basis. Tell us a little bit about TRI and how TRI is, uh, fits in uh, to that equation. And um, yeah, whatever else you feel is, is pertinent for us, for us to know. Yes, so, you know, the first thing is, I like to reflect upon coming out of um, addiction myself uh, over 25 years. Um, and the first thing I see when people come back, where they're thank when they come back to the community, is they need uh, they need a job. But in truth, it's not that they need employment immediately. They will need employment as we move, as they continue to move forward into uh, recovery and healthiness. But the first thing they need is a support system, and that's what we believe in seeing the community of being a support system to. Um, those who are returning back to the community, whether they're coming from treatment or whether they're coming home from a prison. And in that support system, what they need is someone who to walk beside them. Um, and walking beside them, they need a healthy support system which would provide them some housing. And the housing, and so that's one of the things that Truly Reaching You does. We provide housing and and the basic needs. So we think of the housing and the support system is uh, with the family atmosphere. We currently have um, seven houses that house 25 men. And, and so what I mean 25 men, if it's a three bedroom, three men live there, five bedroom, five men live there to have a, um, a family atmosphere. And then they come in, they basically have what they, only balonies they have is what they have on their bodies at that very moment. So how do we reach out to them and help them meet their basic needs by taking them out there, providing clothing to them, uh, providing the basic need of tortery items to them. Um, you also would need um, the tortery items, but you then need a, how is they gonna eat? Because it may take two weeks to get a direction card um, where they go to the county. And, and if they don't have um, social security, card or uh, ID card, they won't be able to get that. So you, now you need to give them an ID card. So we, we, them is things that we could take so 
for granted that assuming that someone have. And it's, it's so much when they come back to the community to say, hey, no, let, let uh, us take you to Walmart. Let us take you to the thrift store and provide the items that you will need to continue to move forward. Here go your bedroom. And there's a bedroom. All you need is a bed, a dresser, a nightstand, a lamp. And we even provide TVs with uh, where they have cables in the room due to the fact that if you have two other men living in the house and with you and they happen to be watching a baseball game and you don't like baseball, well, you don't have to fret over that. You can just go to your room and watch the movie or whatever you want to watch <laughs> instead of having a, a, the argument and being in a disagreement. But, uh, the other thing is coming back and why I believe they need a healthy support system. How is they going to regain hope? Where mm. is they going to get their hope from? Um, uh, how do we help build self-respect for them to realize, okay, you've done that, you used to be that, but you have an opportunity to change. So how do we work with them to re-strengthen relationships that may have been broken from loved ones, moms, dad, grandparents, uncles, friends in the community that they have wrong one way or the other. And most of the time that wrong only take place through their addiction. If they wasn't having, did not have an addiction, they probably wouldn't hurt anyone. But that addiction take you to a whole new place in your lifestyle. Um, and so how do we help them obtain a sustainable, better quality of life? And that's what one's needing when he's coming back to the community uh, from incarceration, coming out of treatment center is what he need. You know, I said from the beginning that they, many men think they need a job. What I have found out in the day-to-day -day operation, you first need to learn how to work, mm. how to work in order to keep that job, you know? And so we do not allow in our programs to, to go to temp services. We say, hold it, we can provide housing for you. And in that housing, we're going to have you do um, – some employment training skills. And in our facility, that employment training skills may be um, in landscaping and lawn care, construction, learning the trade and rehabbing the construction, as well as commercial cleaning. Uh, we have them three um, phases of our program that they can learn that trade. And then we have connected with uh, Northeast uh, Connexus, which is in Northeast Ohio. Connexus provide manufacturing jobs. So we um, provide that them the opportunity to go through that training, which is a four month training, 10 hours a week, and uh, they could get a certificate and get hired. Along with other company, manufacturing companies who have came along and walking beside us, uh, who uh, we could pick up the phone and call and they will implore someone who we have worked with, you know, um, it's just, uh, you know, they come back and once again, they don't have anything. So in our employment training skill, first thing we do is take a man after we get him his ID and that is provide him with six outfits, of uh, uh, work clothes and, and pair of work boots. And then, um, as long with uh, six outfits of uh, casual clothes that if he decided to go to church, it's time to find an employment. Um, you you have some clothes that you not, that's not stained from working in that you could feel good and continue to feel good about yourself. Most of the time in, um, when we out in the streets and we have this addiction or we living in a homeless mode, we have, they have repeatedly have the same clothes on for days. And this way, that that is not encouraging to a man for their self-respect. So we provide them the, the clothing items that they need and help them get reconnected to when there's a men's breakfast is going on. Thank God that the, it's where the community is opening back up across the states because it gives us more opportunity for the uh, men to do different things and reconnect with people they didn't know who's striving to be in a healthy place where these men need to be, you know, uh, in order to surrender their old lifestyle. 
you know, we truly reach to you as a faith-based organization. And we do provide um, peer, uh, peer recovery support coachings. We have um, the Bible studies within our uh, organization um, and uh, the family living environment, which is huge. So we do provide all them, them um, avenues to help give a man a hand up and not a hand out. We, uh, one of the things that really uh, is striking is they need to know, learn something new to do. And um, if they do the same, go back to doing the same thing and we don't reach out to them to be of help, they will then become in a survival mode. And when a man is in a survival mode, naturally he's going to go back to what he's known. So if, if it's robbery or if it's thieving, whatever he knows, that's what he's going to go back to, unfortunately, but they become in a survival mode. So I believe this is how truly reaching you, I wholeheartedly believe this is how truly reaching you was started. How can we make a difference? As I re-enter back into the community myself, how could we help? I play a part in helping making a difference in the community. Uh, to those who understand where they're coming from. So oh, that was that was rich. That was really rich. Thank you uh, for yeah. sharing that. It's it, it made me think about the fact like we talk about um, oftentimes in the context of raising children that it takes a village, um, but really that village never needs to go away. Um, it, it, there continues to be a need for um, for additional support, additional resources. I know. Uh, uh, Bishop Joey Johnson, our, our founder and, and preaching pastor, coined the phrase relationships are everything. And um, that's what made me think about that as a, what you talked about in creating that family environment um, for the men. So uh, that is that is so rich. But at the same time, in thinking about it, there is a need for a community. There's a need for a village. Um, let's let's bring Dr. Uh, Joan Williams into the conversation uh, as she can kind of give us some perspective around some other additional resources um, that are available for uh, people who are struggling with addiction, struggling with uh, recovery that, um, believe it or not, there, there really is a community, um, a village, if you will, a tribe, um, a, a place, a, a set of relationships that, that are there that they can plug into. So, uh, Dr. Joan. Thank you, Pastor Darren. I'm going to attempt to share my screen. I have a brief presentation, which will kind of provide the participants with a federal perspective on this issue. So let me see if I can. Uh... Okay, can everybody see it? I can't hear. Can you guys see? Yeah, yep, we can see it. Great. Okay, well, I, like I said, I just kind of want to give you a, a federal perspective on the issue. And, and I, one, of, one of the things I found is a lot of folks don't know what the federal government does besides make laws. We go to the ballot polls and we, we have elections um, every year. Some folks only vote when is the president going to be elected, but there's representatives that represent you every day on the local level, on the state level, on the federal level. And every district in the nation has a congressional rest, uh, representative. And you can find out who your congressional representative is by just visiting www.house.gov, putting in your zip code, and it will tell you who represents your issues. And in, in addition to finding out who represents your issues, you need to know what do these representatives do for you? How can your representative help you? People with um, uh, opioid, substance abuse, mental health issues, even everyday folks who don't have those issues in protective can take advantage of assistance from the federal government. We help um, our constituents with any federal agency that they may have uh, interaction with if there's difficulty we can serve as someone to help you navigate those and troubleshoot issues. We see a lot of constituents who are former veterans who need help getting veterans benefits, who need help navigating social security issues. Maybe it's an issue with Medicaid and, and Medicare. And we can step in and make congressional inquiries on their behalf and help 
cut out a lot of the frustration, unfortunately, that bureaucracies can bring upon folks who are, are trying to navigate them while dealing with their own personal issues. Um, your congressional representatives can also help um, facilitate passports and expedite the process for you, get DC tours. These may not um, relate directly to opioid and substance use, but folks need to know that these services are out there and available to you. Um, presidential greetings, perhaps someone has a momentous occasion coming up and you'd like a letter from the president to, to say happy birthday or something. These are things that can be done, proclamations. We do a lot of proclamations for folks in the community who have passed on and maybe read at a funeral. You can go to your representative. If you want a flag that was flown over the White House, one of the things that's in particular and really relevant to this situation is grants is that as a federal organization, we help um, service providers in the community access funds to underwrite programs that they're providing services to the community. We can um, write letters of support for grant applications that have been submitted to other federal agencies. In this particular case, it would be SAMHSA. And um, SAMHSA is um, the Substance Abuse and, and Mental Health Services Administration Organization. And that is the organization in the federal government that particularly deals with substance abuse and mental health issues. It was founded by Congress in 1992 because there was a need to make, you know, information services and resource more uh, accessible to the public. Their mission is to reduce the impact of substance abuse and mental health illness in our communities and to provide the leadership, resource, policies, programs, information, data, funding, personnel, et cetera, and et cetera, to really um, advance mental health and substance use disorder prevention, treatment, recovery, and in order to improve community and public and individual health. Um, SAMHSA is, is under, it operates under the Human Health and Human Services Organization. Oops, sorry, we went the wrong way. And, and they have resources that are available to the community, as I said, specifically dealing with addiction. There's a national helpline that operates 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. It's free and it provides um, access to uh, treatment facilities, support groups, com um, community organizations, and callers can get publication and other information. And I have the contact information on the screen for those of you who want to capture it. Um, it's www.findtreatment.samsa.gov. Um, there are even uh, services for young people, a partnership for drug-free kids. There's a helpline, 1-855-DRUG-FREE. And that will help parents who have children that are abusing drugs and alcohol take the necessary actions to help support their loved ones. And then for organizations that are working in the substance abuse and mental health space, there's the Community Anti-Drug Coalition of America Technical Assistance Hotline. And they will help organizations do what they do for the folks in the community. They will provide the technical assistance to make sure their programs are effective and reaching the people that they're designed to reach. And I want to thank you again, Pastor Darren, for having me. And I'm um, take any questions, if, should there be any. Thank Pastor you. <laughs> thank you. That, that's also very helpful. So now, you know, it gives us a perspective of both at like the city level, um, but then also at a federal level of, of all the different uh, resources that are available. Uh, and that's really one of the reasons why we uh, we uh, named this 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 webinar series hidden in plain sight because so so long the problem even recently has been hidden uh, although it's right in front of us because we've been distracted through uh, election cycles and COVID and this and that um, that has been distracting but then at the same time uh, help uh, is also hidden in plain sight uh, or or it's right in front of us and you know everybody knows someone um that that is a uh that is impacted uh by substance abuse and particularly opiate use uh this disorder uh so we are going to open it up for some questions if anybody has some questions i know i'll throw out for uh for for dr joan williams is there um 
when you when you look at the 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 help from the the federal level um is it is it is it the um how close is the federal government kind of working with uh the organizations like perry clark's uh truly reaching you uh is there any kind of like collaboration in, in those kind of spaces I think the federal government works through the states. Um, as you know, all different communities are operating differently. So the federal government really carries the purse strings. Okay. okay. So we'll give funding to the state of Ohio, and then uh, uh, Perry's organization would work with the state of Ohio to get whatever fundings they need for the situation. And it all works in within the context of whatever state laws are. Um, okay. I, I learned the term home rule when I got to Ohio. Um, and different areas are very, very particular about wanting to have autonomy and how things are operating in their territory. So the federal government will provide support, they will provide funding, but they really let the, the individual communities and states kind of administer what's happening in their area based on their needs. Thank you. Do you want to jump in, Perry? Yes, I'm sorry I didn't raise my hand, but uh, yes, Darren, uh, Pastor, what I learned what uh, Dr. Williams is saying is we get help from the state and we know the funds are come from the, the federal government. They okay. issue it to the state and we've been, um, one of the things I, um, this is wonderful because Dr. Williams speaking took me back to um, a grant that the state had received and I'm going back 15, 16 years, the state had received this federal, this grant through the federal and that, and they called me and used me, uh, truly reaching you as a pilot program. And I asked the state of Ohio where the funding came from. And they told me from the federal government and we want to use you because we know the work you've been doing. And so it took me back and that spurred us on and encouraged me uh, with that help to continue to do this work and knowing that there was help out there because the state of Ohio do care about uh, those returning back, citizens returning back to their community. So I just, um, we have been uh, blessed and fortunate to be a part of receiving that help from the federal government, but once again, it comes through the state. Yeah, Thank you. there's another way that the, the organizations can interact with the federal government, and that again is through their representative's office. What I find is that a lot of organizations don't develop the relationship, we said relationships are everything, with their federal representatives who would be the person that will support what you're doing in the community if they know. So one of the things you can do is invite your federal representative to your facility to see what you're doing so that when you have an ask, you're not a stranger to them. The other thing is you should, you know, there are lobbying days that you can take trips to DC and kind of meet with them in their office, know who's in their office, know who's on the other end of that phone. When you call with a request, related to a grant application or some other need um, that maybe someone in your program has dealing with social security. You have a relationship with that office because they know who you are and they know what you're trying to accomplish. That's, a, that's an important, important information. Um, I see one of the attendees has their hand raised. Um, please put, if you have a question, just go ahead. You can, you can type that question in the chat um, or there's also a, a Q&A feature that you can use, either one. Uh, will allow us to, to get your question. So if you have a question, um, please go ahead and uh, you can go ahead and put it in the uh, in the chat. Um, uh, this is this reminds me, it made me think about a conversation that um, as I think about the uh, the current uh, climate and everything and the conversation that me and uh, Perry were having a couple of months ago, that uh, I'm seeing all of these these uh these signs with people with jobs that are hiring and there's people that and it seems like there's such a need for 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 hiring and you know when you have but it seems like there's not a need for as many people to be working right now and when you add in kind of like a drug abuse and that kind of thing to the mix is there is there or should we be aware or should we kind of be thinking about uh how that may kind of maybe bring a rise in that uh activity in our in our community coming up in the in the horizon is that something that that is related to that 
Is that is that question for me, Pastor Dan? Uh, if, uh, either either one. Well, I think I think there's a I think the full story of the effects of COVID have not yet been told. Mm -hmm. um, I think a lot of things um, came together in what I would call a perfect storm when COVID hit. I think folks realize now that they like being home. So the whole transitioning to ro remote work is causing employees to make more demands and be more particular about the type of work that they want. And, and businesses who have not been able to pivot and offer flexible working arrangements are finding folks saying, look, I'm quitting. I'm going to start a, an, my own business and, and go into, you know, do something else that I can spend more time with my family, that I can have more flexibility in my schedule. So I think COVID has really opened the door for a lot of changes in just how we live in general. Um, and it, the whole story hasn't fully been told yet about the impact. But I think one of the, the keys is for folks to be flexible and really think about the bigger picture and not their own um, little part of the world because everything is, is being impacted by this one pandemic that started last year. Thank you. Thank you. Did, do you have anything you want to add, Terry? Or no, I I just um, we need, you know I I don't as Dr. Williams said I don't believe that it really the impact of really we know what taken what took place exactly, and I agree wholeheartedly with that. But I think that we need to keep our mind open because we don't know if there's another something else is coming behind this and and just not take it for granted all oh, that just one time because it have affected all parts of the country and every phase of work when we talk about work it have affected every phase of it you know for businesses and all so it's uh, you know I have learned that multiple houses across the state, um, re-entering recovery houses, have actually shut down. And it made me ask the question of why. But if you're not prepared in the work that you're doing and looking at it as a whole, that could easily happen. Because we got phone calls in December uh, from the state, uh, state institution asking us, was we still open? And I thought that was, huh, are we still open? Uh, we're dealing with lives, you know? And that's how I took it. We're dealing with lives, so absolutely we're open. But they had even told me that houses had shut down. So it's, uh, let's see what's to come next and let's be prepared for it, um, Sue Hart. Yeah, I think you, you make a, a wonderful point, Perry, when you talk about being prepared. One of the things that, Folks, there's a scripture verse that says, be not slothful in business. And sometimes folks get real lax when everything is really well and they don't prepare for the unexpected. So we, when we start talking about, you know, business continuity plans, thinking about, as you think about the work that you do, the what ifs. You know, what if the electricity doesn't go out, goes out? Can you still do what you do? What, what, what happens if we have a COVID? Can you pivot to your staff working from home? Do you have the equipment that they need to be able to continue to serve where you serve from another location. And those kinds of conversations you happen too late if you're ha if they're happening when we're in the midst of a crisis. Cuz we if, especially if when you're in the service arena, you've got to think about that stuff before another crisis. I remember being in New York and people said, "Oh, nothing's ever going to happen in New York." And then Hurricane Sandy hit. And something did happen in New York. A lot of it was underwater and people were not ready because they had this false sense of invincibleness, right? That they were invincible and it just wasn't going to happen here. And I think COVID, I think Sandy, I think Katrina, all of those things have taught us differently. And it's time to learn that lesson and go forward with a different mindset and a different approach. I mean, you guys really, what really jumped out to me and um, and maybe you could give some examples to this, but uh, the need to pivot and, you know, how how has, you know, um, organizations that that are trying to help people 
uh, with recovery because it's such a recovery can be such a day by day um, thing. And when and how have you you know pivoted to kind of help still be there day by day in the midst of all this un uncertainty? So I'm there. So one of the things you know when COVID hit, no one knew anything. The governor was on um, the news every day. You know, um, had a, had a special hour. And we had to follow that. You know, we mm. had to know what he was saying that was taking place. And so, as I stated earlier, for us, we had seven houses with 25 men. So, and we do employment training skills in the construction. And during that time, it was, um, it was the winter months. So we was doing construction and commercial cleaning. And we had to make a choice to say, hmm, we can have men living in one in two different houses working together or training together you know uh, because of now we have we can have of two houses shut down of eight men or six men you know a shut down and become ill so we had to pivot and say okay uh we normally have one driver who would do work with anywhere from eight to 12 men. Well, we had to have three drivers and one driver would only carry the, the one house and, and break it up to the houses and say, you're only gonna be responsible because when you go home, you need to know who you've been around. You know, if, if you know, and so you can, cause you, we go home to our family. So we can narrow down if I became ill or someone became ill, we can narrow down and say, okay, maybe they they need a quarantine because I, I didn't develop or COVID. So we had to pivot that way. Was it easy? No, you know, it wasn't easy um, sitting, spreading apart and wiping down your vehicles when you get in and out. Uh, but we had to keep going because men needed something to do versus being in the house and not going out. So we had to pivot and then we had to, uh, every three days we would uh, take that house on a hike out to walk. So they, uh, to the park or to a, a state metro park so they could walk and hike and so they could feel. We had to go out and buy a bunch of board games so all the houses, to, you know, to change your mind because no longer in the winter months uh, on the weekend we'd go to a movie. No longer could you do that, you know. So them are some of the changes that we had to make as, as well as having the, the cleaning supplies in the house and in the mass and said, we need to honor this and uh, don't be uh, afraid to wipe down that vehicle when you get out because you think it is, it's extra work. Sometimes men think who's unhealthy, think, oh, I got to do this. Why? This ain't real. No, this is this is real. So those are some of the things that we had to, to pivot to make changes to. Um, and at the same time, um, you know, your funds, when you are doing training, funds are cut back. You, you, you can't go out and do this project, so you have less funds, but um, the organization and the men still need to move forward in their lives, so we can't shut the door. Let's find a new way. And, and, and so, in part, we wasn't, we didn't know it was coming, but just a natural preparation of what is something unusual happened is how I always have looked at it in, in my own personal life as well. You know, yeah, I think that there are there are two um, big concepts that come out of this whole thing, and one is infrastructure, and two sustainability. Um, and I think sometimes organizations in in their quest to be creative and expand services, they enlarge their vision and they don't pay attention to infrastructure. So what happens is that the vision begins to crumble when things change. So, you know, COVID hit and everybody realized how important broadband was, right? For our, for our kids to continue education online and, and folks who didn't have broadband were, were getting left out. So we had to pivot to make sure hot spots got out. So it's important to think about again, how can we continue to do what we do and meet the needs of those 
who have those needs when things change. And as we're evolving as service providers and, and public servants, those kinds of, of, of concepts have to be at the forefront of our dreaming and our building and our constructing systems that are supposed to meet the needs of the people because the needs persist when crises arise, if not, you know, get, get worse and, and it are exacerbated, they don't go away. So in the midst of a crisis, we need to still be present and able to be able to meet the needs that are existent. I just want to just really just want to thank you guys um, for, for taking the time, especially um, uh, both of you guys are just so well versed, um, have such a wealth of information. Um, we just want to take a moment just to thank you, Dr. Jones, for your service um, to our community from, from a federal perspective. And, uh, and Perry Clark, just in listening to, to hear how you, your organization pivoted and to, to hear the, uh, the passion in your voice. Um, Akron is better um, because there is a, a truly reaching you um, in Akron that, that, is, that has that kind of heart um, to help people. Um, and I and I just pray that everyone that's that's attending here was able to get something out of it. I know I did. Um, so I just want to let everybody also know that uh, as a part of this webinar series tomorrow, uh, there will be a uh, a resource uh, a resource drive through. So it's a recovery resource drive through and food giveaway uh, will be taking place at the House of Lord tomorrow from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Um, the address is 1650 Diagonal, Ab Diagonal Road uh, in Akron, Ohio. That will be taking place. So if you know anyone uh, that, that needs food or needs some help in this space, uh, we wanted to have a, have a bridge so we can have a conversation, but then the very day after this conversation, we can uh, make available uh, something tangible uh, for everyone to, uh, to be able to access. So if you know anyone, please share that information that we'll be having that. Uh, at the House of the Lord uh, tomorrow. Uh, for, again, that's from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. And that's at 1650 uh, Diagonal Road. Uh, also, oh, we have a question. So let me finish this and I'll get to, to this question real quick before, before we close. Um, but also just wanna make everyone aware because we had people joining after we started that this webinar is, is one of a series of uh, four. We have one more coming up in August. And if you wanna catch any of the previous webinars, um, you can go to the House of Lore YouTube channel, uh, and those are there. If you hit the subscribe button and the bell, you'll also get a notification of when this video uh, has been made. And then also you can use that to, to share it um, as, a, as a resource going, going forward. Um, this one question that, uh, that we have is, what kind of help can folks out in the community offer uh, for these programs? So. I'm sorry, Darren. Did yeah. You, did you want? Yeah, yeah. If you want, one of you guys want to jump in. I guess people want to. The person wants to know how can they offer help um, to these to these programs. What kind of things they can do to help? So there's a um, love for us. We love to have a conversation. So we we ask that they would uh, give us a call to the office. Love to sit down and um, set up a meeting that, when they call the office and sit down and share with them exactly what we do and where their strengths are or where they may be of help or have resources and who else they may have because we didn't had a probation officer come out and help we didn't, uh, office we didn't had the parole adult parole authorities come out we didn't had judges send people out to us to help um and voluntary different places so um in numerous of churches. So we're always open to that. We like to see where their strength at because we do not want to have someone come out and help when that's not their strength and that's not what they really want to do. So we like to have that conversation to see exactly where their strength at and what they have their heart desire. But we're always open to that and receiving help. Great, great. And what I just did um, for everyone, I put the uh, website for Truly Reaching You in the chat. Um, so that way you have a, a, a way to get in touch uh, with Perry and, uh, and, and reach out to that organization. So the, the website address is in the chat and you can, you can have that for further reference. So 
uh, with that, I just want to thank you guys for for taking the time to to be with us today. And uh, and as always, you know, we want to continue to have this conversation going. So uh, be on the lookout for the next webinar coming up in, in August. And again, thank you guys for your time and thank you for your service to the uh, to the Akron community. Thank you for having us. Take care. Thank Have a great you. Day.